Those of you who watched my last video will have seen me put my foot in it when I said, and next time I'll show you how I made the files to do the laser engraving on this box. It's something I've planned to do for quite a while, but I've just never managed it. Finally, I've managed to get around to it. So, let's have a look at it. So since you've last seen the laser, I've added this here. It's just a small metal pointer. It's held in place by magnets, and it gives me a reference point to where the laser is. Before that, I had lines running up here and on the side there for my alignment, but I decided I'd give this a try. It's held on by magnets so that it can be adjusted if the laser is not quite lined up properly. I've already been through the process and made sure that this here is pointing to where the center is there. So it's in direct alignment with the x-axis here. And I know that's 124.2 millimeters back from this point here. So all I need to do now is I'm going to square my material to the tabletop here and then I can move it in and out so that the pointer is directly above my X. Now it isn't super, super critical that I get this exactly right because what I'm going to do is I'm going to engrave a reference point onto my material here so that when I change my cutter to do the final cut out of the project I can get it aligned up perfectly. So now that I've got this above my X and Y zero point, I now need to set my height. And to do that, I want this here nine millimeters above my stock. So I've got here a nine millimeter drill bit, and I'm just going to keep adjusting the height. There we go. So I'm now nine millimeters above the stock. That's a nice simple way of doing it. Over here in Mac 3, I'm just going to Set my X, Y, and 0 to 0. In actual fact, that's wrong. I'm going to set my Y to 124.2. With that now set, I can quickly hold my piece of wood down and remove my bit of tape. And by hitting the origin button, that now sets my laser up ready to cut. With well, the laser now ready to go, don't forget to wear your safety glasses. You only get one pair of eyes. I've turned on the fume extraction, so we can push the start key. And I can see a message there saying now I can turn on the laser. So I switch on the key, push my button there, the laser starts. Push the cycle key again, or the start key again. And off it goes. So here's the outlet to my fume extraction. I'm using my four inch dust collector hose connected to the laser shoe output fan. And in the workshop, I can't smell anything, but out here, I can smell wood burning. So it is a very effective method of removing smoke from the work area. This is how I envisage the completed project to look when I'm done. And here we have the drawing for it. We start with a circle and inside it I've put my text. So far everything is the same as you would be doing if you were going to v-carve this. There is one small addition I've made and that is just down the bottom left hand corner here I've added a small reference point at minus 100 x and minus 100 y. That's just to realign my cutter once I've finished the laser engraving. Our next step is to create the toolpaths. Here I've created four separate toolpaths. Two of them for doing the laser, one for cutting out the final profile, and one just to put a beveled edge on it so that we can see the little beveled edge on the completed project. 
So let's look at our laser profile, the first one. Here I've selected all my text and all I've done is selected a pocket toolpath. You can see here that my laser has a diameter of 0.15 millimeters. Now that figure I just pulled out of my, well, through trial and error I've figured out roughly what I think the diameter of the laser spot is. The actual diameter depends on how fast the laser moves, how well focused that you have, and also how long you keep it on one particular spot. The longer you keep it there, the larger the spot will be. But I've found that the figure of 0.15 millimeters works well for me. I've just put in a pass depth of 20 millimeters, it doesn't matter. I have a 50% step over, and that is important. And I have a feed rate of 500 or 24 inches per minute. My cut depth is one millimeter, or more precisely, it is one unit. So if you were doing this in inches, you would make it one inch. Because the laser is set up to move one unit per step, it doesn't matter. Just set it to one either one millimeter or one inch and you'll be away and laughing. That's if you follow the settings that I have on my laser. Now the only other critical thing I have here is what type of clear pocket I'm doing, be it offset or raster. Now offset does not work as well as raster does. Raster gives me a much better finish and I always leave it set at raster. Doesn't matter whether you climb or conventional cutting because we're using a laser, not a router. But uh, do a final pass, uh, profile pass, just uh, once you've cut away the inside of it. The next laser toolpath I've created is this one here, which I've called Laser 2. This one is a profile toolpath, and it's for doing the little target I have down here for setting my cutter when I change it back to a router bit. All I want to do is engrave on the line using the laser, again using one unit for cut depth and exactly the same parameters I have set up here for the laser. So that's 0.15 millimeters, 50% step over, 500 millimeters per minute or 24 inches a minute, whichever you prefer. That will basically cut this pattern here on my piece of wood ready to align my cutter. Now let's just pull up these two laser toolpaths and preview them. So I'll select the laser one first, I'll preview that, and the laser two toolpath and preview that. Now what you'll notice here is these look absolutely hideous on VCARV Pro. But there's a reason for that. It's to do with the quality of the simulation. What we need to do is set it to best quality. If we now select laser 1 and preview it, and laser 2 and preview it, now we get quite a good rendition of what it looks like. So just bear that in mind. If you do do your simulation and it doesn't look any good, it's because you haven't got the quality set to the highest quality that VCAR Pro can print out. Now that I've created my two toolpaths for the laser, I'm now going to save them to my memory stick. So I select Save Toolpath, I select the two toolpaths, and I come down here to Post Processor. What I need to do is change it to laser shoe, in my case, millimeters, but there is another one called laser shoe inch. Both of these files can be downloaded from the laser shoe project that's in the video description of the laser shoe build. So I've selected laser shoe millimeters and I'm just going to go save toolpath. I'm going to put it in a directory called round to it and I'm going to call it laser.text and go save. 
So let's now take a look at the G-code generated by the custom post processor. The first thing it does of note is these two instructions here. We have a, an instruction C-1 and C-0. Now if you remember from the laser shoe build, the C axis is the laser control. And the only bit of interest that we have here is the direction. Whenever direction changes from a positive to a negative direction, the laser will turn on. And when it goes from a negative direction to a positive one, it will turn off. The next thing it does is do an X0, Y0, Z0 and takes the laser shoe to the origin point. And then we have an instruction to change tool. This effectively stops the laser and allows us to turn it on. You can see the next is a comment saying turn laser on. And you'll see that on the screen of Mac 3. At this point here, you turn the laser on and you're ready to go. So the purpose of these instructions up here, before turning the laser on, was to ensure that the laser was actually turned off. Because the last thing you want to do is switch the laser on and find you're burning a hole in your material before you even start your engraving. Now the next thing is, this looks like pretty normal G-code, except we don't have a Z-axis here, we only have a C. And that's the other thing that the post processor does. It changes our Z-coordinates to C-coordinates. If you remember up here, we last left C sitting at C0. Our first C command is here, minus 1. That's going to turn our laser on. And as you can see there, it just keeps reiterating that C minus 1. So it's because there is no change in direction, the laser will just remain on until it gets told to move in a positive direction. And here we have down here, C6. At this point in time, the laser will now turn off because we're going from a negative direction to a positive one. And it'll stay off until we get to here where we go tell it to go to C minus 1. Now if you're wondering where the C6 came from, that is actually your safe Z height. So we can look in here in our profile or our pocket toolpath and you can see here safe Z 6 millimeters. And again that's shown here as clearance Z1. So that's where that comes from. It doesn't matter what it is, it's a positive direction so the laser will simply turn off when it goes from minus 1 to 6. And from 6 to minus 1, it will turn back on again. And really that's the secret to the laser shoe post-processor. Simple change of direction and calling it the C-axis. Simply follow the tutorial video on how I set up my one and you'll find this post processor will work fine for you. You should also be able to put this post processor into Aspire software as well and it should work fine for that. The engraving is now complete. You can see here there's a little bit of smoke where it's sort of spilled out onto the wood here in places. That's not a problem. A quick sand with a um, a bit of sandpaper will get rid of that good as gold. And just over here I put a little target symbol here cross here's with x minus 100 y minus 100 and I'm going to use that to set up my router bit to cut out the final shape of this here that looks pretty good it's I've now got the tip of the V bit over the cross of the, of the uh, cross here's here so in Mac 3, I'm going to enter x minus 100, y minus 100. I can now take this up and replace the cutter with the final bit I need to finish this job. To do that, I'm going to use a quarter inch down cutting spiral bit. So I'm just setting the cutter to the table surface here. And I'll be calling that minus 18. 
I've now loaded the new file to do the profile cut. So we'll get that started. Having completed the laser toolpath, I'm now going to look at this one here, the cutout toolpath. It's nothing more than a standard profile cut using a quarter inch or 6.35 millimeter router bit and I'm cutting the full 18 millimeters or three quarters of an inch through the material. We'll just calculate that and do a preview. I'll now delete the waste material and here we have this is what it will look like when it comes off the machine. We can now select that toolpath and we can now save it. Now one of the most important things you need to do is make sure you have selected here Mac 3. Don't leave it on laser shoe. Ensure that you do change it back to Mac 3. Just save the toolpath and I'll call it cutout.txt and we'll save that. The last toolpath here is called beveled edge and that is nothing more than just a v-bit run around on the line to a depth of three millimeters and it's there only so I can put a little beveled edge on there to see what the finished result will be once I've run it around my router table and it's, I don't need to create a toolpath for that it's simply for viewing purposes to get an idea of what the finished article will look like. I've now removed it from the table and I've cleaned up the edges here and put a bevel on it using my router table. I now need to get rid of these smoke marks on it so I'm just using a 240 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to give it a bit of a sand. Finally I'm going to put some uh, bry wax on here. I don't know whether it's a wise idea or not. But we'll see what happens when we put it on. Well, wasn't that riveting? So much so, I've ended up making two of them. And I stuck keyholes in the back of them so I can hang them on the wall. Making the laser engraving files really is very simple. It's really just the post processor that does all the work for you. You just use VCarve Pro in the same manner that you always have used it. Just select the correct post processor and hey presto, away you go. The laser will do the rest of the work for you. Well, I hope you found this video useful and that you all managed to get around to it at some stage. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, subscribe to me on YouTube, and follow me on Google+. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Cheers.